Let's get to some questions. Sounds great. Um, hello. If you were to give us the simplest metrics for language progress, like words read, free, free flow listening hours, and focused listening hours, what would those benchmarks look like? So this person is looking to find the simplest ways to measure progress in a language. What is the simplest yet most concrete count of your ability in a language? It's more of like a philosophical question, I guess. I don't think yeah. we're going to come to a, six, a perfect answer, but um, yeah, yeah, this I mean, question I think... comes from Sebastian, 1991. Thanks for the question, Sebastian. Um, the first metric that we focus on is uh, vocabulary size. So a uh, number of root words unconjugated that you know. Um, those generally break up into 5,000, 10,000, and 15,000 and above. Uh, as the metric, metri metri sorry, the benchmarks for that. Um, generally, like 5,000 as of passive, like being able to understand those in their conjugated forms, we would consider that's really the basic level of fluency. 10,000, you're doing really good. 15,000 is about what you need for the CEFR C2. Um, above that, you're basically getting into native speaker territory. Um, Specialized native speaker territory. Yeah, so like college to... educated, you know certain specific, you have studied specific areas of, uh, of something in the language. Um, so I think that's probably the easiest one. Well, I say easy, except we still can't agree on what a word is, so. Uh... Nobody can. <laughs> it's been an open question in SLA for decades. Yeah. Um, but that's like the, the first one that like we are at least somewhat confident in. Um, then there is number of hours, but number of hours again, or a number of hours is sort of uh, correlated with ability, but it is not actually representative of ability. So you can spend 100 hours doing uh, an immersion activity and another person can spend 100 hours doing a different immersion activity and you can have completely different results. Yeah. Um, so you have to get really nitty gritty to understand like exactly what you're spending that time on. But, you know, hours is correlated. So generally, um, if you do uh, for like a category one language, if you did uh, 500 hours of reading and 500 hours of listening, and 500 hours of speaking and writing slash writing, like you would be quite good at the language. Um, there's no no doubt about that. Uh, I think. Well, if oh, those sorry, apples there is are doubt. Placed, <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a big question. Like one of the things we want to understand with the app is like how do hours spent on different activities versus focus levels really affect your actual progress um, or your actual ability? Yep. Because like the other um, number that they bring up in their question is words read, right? So if you've read a couple million words, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean for your reading ability? And it depends on if you've always been doing harder and harder content, um, how much you're really understanding, right? Because I know when I'm about to go to sleep before bed, I'm not really fully comprehending the words that I'm reading. I'm kind of like in between sleep and just kind of looking at the words. It's like, does that count? Like there's all these different questions with um, how good those hours are or that time spent is, yeah. which is why this is a difficult question to answer, right? There's no real simple metric for just saying, yeah, you're this good because that's just not how languages work. Yeah, you have to sort of analyze the quality of your immersion, like the content that you're immersing with, and then also the quality of your attention, uh, how much attention you're paying and how much you're thinking about it. Um, and the quality of the immersion um, has a bunch of different components, including sort of the density of known and unknown content, mm -hmm. or the density of utterances or words or sentences within a certain period of time if it's something like a tv show or a podcast um and then also uh the domain in which it's in um and then for more specialized skills the difficulty of the uh, actual medium itself so the difference between someone speaking into a microphone with a script versus someone speaking you know loud auditorium off script where they're talking about whatever they want mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, a level of quality there that is different than and is separate it's a separate dimension to, to measure from the actual content itself um the, the language content 
So there are so many different components to measure that, um, that it's, it's hard to really derive any significant insights without having much more strict test cases where we like mm -hmm. instruct people what to do, which most people don't want to do. Um, but you can think in terms of the quality of your own immersive experience. Generally, you always want to be pushing a little bit outside of your comfort zone. If you're if you're working to grow, uh, grow your understanding, grow your ability, uh, pushing outside your comfort zone is what you want to do. And that comfort zone can come from uh, the ratio of known to unknown words or the concept that you're dealing with or a different dialect um, that uses different slang or different meanings of words, or it can come from the quality of the actual media, like the audio quality. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of yeah. different factors to consider there. I made a video a while ago about the idea of optimal input, which is a one of the ideas that Krashen talked about. And there were, I think, four different aspects of, of creating high quality input. Um, and I think there's kind of a, a split of like quality for you personally versus like quality linguistically. And things like density of actual, like real language is really important, right? You, you would never learn a language if somebody was just repeating the same five words for a thousand hours. That's not real language, even though it's part of the language um, and, and questions like that. And so if your input is of high quality or close to that optimal level um, and you're focused on it, then hours is probably the simplest metric. That's what we mostly use in the community. Counting your active hours of focused immersion is generally the number that people throw out there. The next one is um, maybe like words read or something like that, but it's almost always hours. So, yeah. Thank you for the question, Sebastian.